So Facebook decided they were going to crack down on hate speech. So they asked some prominent users from their platform. Take a look at the CNN report on this. The most trusted name in news. Just into CNN, Facebook is purging several high-profile names from its platforms. Among them, Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan, right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, as well as his media outlet Infowars. They're being banned for spreading, quote, dangerous ideology. CNN Business senior media reporter Oliver Darcy joins me now. So what more do we know about this ban and, and who else is included? Yeah, this is a very strict action from Facebook, Erica. Basically, they've deemed these individuals to be dangerous, is what Facebook is saying. Those individuals include Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan, who has a history of anti-Semitic remarks, um, people like right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, and then also some right-wing media personalities who are pretty popular online, people like Milo Yiannopoulos, Laura Loomer, Paul Joseph Watson. Those people are banned, as well as a uh, failed congressional candidate, Paul Nalen, who had made a number of anti-Semitic remarks. Um, Facebook has given given us a statement, and they do say in their statement, I'll read part of it to you right now, um, they say that we've always banned individuals or organizations that promote or engage in violence and hate, regardless of ideology. The process for evaluating potential violators is extensive, and it is what led us to our decision to remove these accounts today. Um, Facebook told me that the uh, process they use is to uh, engage a number of factors. Uh, have they promoted uh, hate speech on Facebook? Have they been banned for violating the rules in the past? Have they self-described themselves as part of a hate movement or hate ideology? Those are the factors that Facebook was weighing, and you know they're taking this really strict action uh, moments ago. And, and banning from Facebook and Instagram, correct? Yes, Facebook obviously owns Instagram, and so someone like Alex Jones who had been banned from Facebook a while back, last year in the summer, but he was still having a presence on Instagram, and that had drawn a lot of scrutiny from people who are saying, hey, you know, you guys banned him from one of your platforms, why are you allowing him to have a presence on Instagram? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, now Facebook is going to be banning uh, Alex Jones and Infowars from not only their main platform, Facebook, but also from Instagram. Um, I checked in also to see if these people would be banned from WhatsApp, which is also owned by Facebook, mm -hmm. um, and a spokesperson cannot say immediately because it's, I guess, unclear whether some of these people have uh, WhatsApp accounts, according to the spokesperson. All right, but we know you'll continue to check on it. Oliver Darcy, good to see you. Thank you. There was a giant conspiracy to actively push us into an illegal offensive war that resulted in $7 trillion wasted, at least 200,000 civilians killed, and thousands of U.S. civilians killed. Uh, excuse me, thousands of U.S. soldiers killed. Should all the mainstream media outlets get their, their stuff pulled as a result of that? Because you want to talk about conspiracy, that was conspiracy, that was a conspiracy theory through and through. And then it was also a conspiracy theory that was used towards pushing an illegal offensive war that resulted in the deaths of countless people. I mean, again, if you're going to talk about, well, we got to pull people down because this is, this is dangerous. It's dangerous to have people like Alex Jones up there talking and Milo Yiannopoulos and Louis Farrakhan and Paul Joseph Watson is another one that they pulled, which is particularly weird because Paul Joseph Watson was the guy who works at InfoWars, worked at InfoWars. He was like an affiliate with InfoWars. And in the Alex Jones deposition, I don't know if you guys saw it. I watched it. The whole thing is on YouTube and it's amazing. But they, the, the person doing the deposition keeps telling Alex Jones, like, and your colleague, Paul Joseph Watson, kept telling you, don't shut up about Sandy Hook. You're wrong about Sandy Hook. It's not a conspiracy. Stop bringing it up. Stop bringing it up. And they kept mentioning to Alex Jones, like, when your colleague was telling you this, what were you thinking? So here's a guy who, and he's dabbled in 9-11 conspiracy stuff, among other things. So there, I think there's a solid argument that he's, you know, far, far right guy, but pulling him down? For what? Because he, he was affiliated with Alex Jones? Or is the 9-11 conspiracy stuff enough to pull somebody down? I mean, that's a whole fucking genre on YouTube and, and online. Should all of that stuff get pulled down? Okay, so if all of that stuff gets pulled down, if you say yes to that, well, what about, what about the conspiracy theories regarding JFK? Because over 50% of the country literally thinks that it wasn't, the official story is not correct. That's what they say.
Now, I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't looked at that in depth, so I can't give you, like, a solid opinion on that. But here's what I do know. You should be allowed to talk about it. Even if you're, even if you're fucking factually dead wrong and your conspiracy is the weirdest of all the conspiracies, you should be allowed to talk about that. You should. You just should. So if you start pulling out, well, he did 9-11 truth, well, okay, then should the JFK truthers get their shit pulled down? Because that's another genre in and of itself. So you see the problem here once you open the door, and then there's the flip side of the equation, which is... Think about this. Remember when, uh, you know, we learned through WikiLeaks what happened with the DNC in the 2016 election where... I mean, the, the details, the specifics of how that election was rigged for Hillary. I mean, literally, the DNC was acting as an arm of the Clinton campaign. Literally. Hillary had last say on the fucking um, PR releases from the DNC. They had a fundraising agreement between the two of them. We also learned, of course, that, you know, Donna Brazil was slipping Hillary questions before the debates with Bernie. Um, there were just, there was just endless detail about the ways in which everything was biased against Bernie Sanders. Also, we learned Hillary Clinton was given these speeches uh, talking about how there's an intolerable bigotry against the rich in the United States of America. And I think we need totally free and open trade borders, like NAFTA on steroids, basically. Um, and I think, you know, you should have public positions and private positions if you're a politician. So in other words, tell your donors one thing and do that, but tell the public something else. So we learned all of this stuff, and all this stuff was super important, but mainstream media avoided this stuff like the plague. And they even went as far as to muddy the waters and pretend like, no, 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 these leaks aren't even genuine. Because there was an attempt afterwards, like, okay, muddy the waters by doing a fake release of WikiLeaks stuff. And pretending that, see, WikiLeaks got something wrong, therefore you can't trust any of the stuff they just released. Meanwhile, they were right about all the stuff they released. So think about it. If Facebook is just, you know, axing people now, for flimsy reasons, for no reason, in some cases for what many would argue are good reasons, because you do have genuinely dangerous actors in the case of, like, Alex Jones and fucking uh, Louis Farrakhan. But what happens when a show like mine or a show like Jimmy Dore's when we give you all the information and detail on the next thing where maybe the DNC tries to rig it against Bernie, or we learn more from WikiLeaks about a war or something like that, and we come out here and tell you the truth about that. What happens? It's super easy for them to say, oh, now Kyle's a conspiracy theorist, Jimmy Dore's a conspiracy theorist, we gotta take him down. Bro, what, what do you mean? They were... I mean, they, they ran with this stuff that was just leaked, and the stuff that was leaked was taken in an illegal manner. That's the, that's the next thing they're going to do is, well, hey, what do you mean? Chelsea Manning broke the law when she gave all the information about our soldiers killing civilians and then laughing about it. She gave that information to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks ran with it. Well, it was illegal what Chelsea Manning did. She went to prison over it. So you can't report on that. You can't talk about that. So Facebook can conceivably say, well, we're just going to pull everybody who's talking about what's in the next WikiLeaks stuff. I mean, listen, this is the slipperiest, slippery slope of all time. How about when I come out here and I always tell you guys, the U.S. is literally arming and backing jihadists. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. It was a strategy from the fucking 1980s where we were against the Soviet Union so much and they were in a war in Afghanistan, so we armed the Mujahideen in Afghanistan which later became the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. We armed them, we propped them up, and we wanted to see them fight the Soviets. We aligned ourselves with the devil, basically. And then eventually the chickens came home to roost and came back and bit us in the ass. But we're still doing it today. We're, doing, we're arming, giving them uh, over $100 billion weapons deal to the Saudi government as they're doing a genocide in Yemen. We're uh, backing jihadist rebels in Syria. So when I come out here and I give you the specifics of how we're backing the jihadist rebels in Syria, al-Nusra, when I give you the specifics on how Saudi Arabia is doing a genocide with our weapons in Yemen, it is so easy for Facebook, if they wanted to, to say, that sounds a little conspiratorial. You're arguing the U.S. is in bed with jihadists? I think you're a conspiracy theorist. Gone. Axed. And if, if your response to this is, well, Kyle, but come on, you're talking theory here. This hasn't actually happened yet. Well, I'll tell you something that's already happened. Facebook has repeatedly axed pro-Palestine groups. 
Why? It's at the behest of the Israeli government. The Israeli government says, hey man, if you want to function here, you're going to have to block these, uh, or, or axe or censor these pro-Palestine groups. So they did it. So in other words, there is no objective arbiter at Facebook who's just going to determine in a totally emotionless and, and dispassionate way who should and shouldn't be axed. What's going to happen is the people at the top are going to have their own biases and their own predilections. And they're going to be in bed with their own interests. And then you're going to get actions that reflect the worldview of the people who are at the top of Facebook. Why should Silicon Valley oligarchs be able to willy-nilly ax anybody and take away their free speech? Now, I know everybody says this isn't literally a free speech issue. And it's correct. It's not legally a free speech issue. But it's for damn sure the principle of freedom of speech. 100%. And there's a solid argument that today, the new public square is social media. It's Twitter. It's Facebook. So if that's the new public square, why shouldn't we have, basically, the First Amendment be expanded to apply to that? And why shouldn't we have the default position be free speech? That doesn't mean you could do direct threats of violence. If you do direct threats of violence, I have no sympathy for you and they can take action against you. That doesn't mean you could do a clear-cut case of libel or slander. If you do libel or slander, that's also against the law and there should be a process. It should be open. It should be transparent. But if you're guilty, you're guilty and, and you're gone. I'm, you know, even if you're a free speech absolutist, there are some tiny rules, you know? Um, so... But the default should be freedom of speech. And right now we have a situation where it's shadowy Silicon Valley oligarch billionaires who get to determine who gets to talk and who doesn't get to talk. If you're comfortable with that, you have bought into a principle that will destroy you. That's what's going to happen. You will have bought into a principle that will destroy you. CNN has already done articles calling Jimmy Dore a conspiracy theorist. I think it was specifically over the issue of Syria. They called him a conspiracy theorist because he questioned the evidence in the gas attacks from Assad. Now, whether or not Jimmy's right about that, I don't even care. Because the issue here is, should he be allowed to ask that question? Honestly, I'll go further. Should he be allowed to even maybe talk about it and get it wrong without being fucking censored and, and getting the internet death penalty and kicked off line? The answer is yes, he should be able to do that, in my opinion. Because that's the, that's the default position. The default position should be, let everybody talk, freedom of speech, and then only in very fringe rare cases where there's an open and clear process can you, you say, this person we can get rid of for reasons X, Y, and Z. But certainly, the path we're going down now is incredibly scary. And if you're on the left and you're cheering this, I'm warning you. You know who they're coming for next, right? They're coming for commie groups, Marxist groups. They're coming for, you know... There's a group of, of, of socialist gun owners. It's like gun enthusiasts who are socialists. They'll eventually come for you. They're coming for new Black Panthers and, you know, identitarian movements on the left. This is what happens. Historically, censorship is always used against more marginalized communities. Now, right now is step one, where it's the thing where almost nobody will react and say they're wrong, because who the fuck likes Alex Jones? Who likes Alex Jones? Who likes fucking Louis Farrakhan or Milo Yiannopoulos or Laura Loomer? Like, who likes these people? Nobody likes these people. Or at least no serious people like these people. So it's easy to take a case where everybody goes, yes, I hate that guy, so I agree with this. But they just got you, because you just bought into the principle. And now, that door's open, and that's the slipperiest, slippery slope of all time, and... I'm telling you, here's what's going to end up happening. Only... establishment... Outlets will get free speech and they'll be allowed to get everything wrong and they'll be allowed to do their own conspiracy theories and there will be no consequences for them and all the independent new media outlets and all the left voices, truly left voices, they will be the ones, along with the far right, to get axed. So don't say I didn't warn you. And again, if you buy into this, well, just ask yourself the question. If all this technology was around during the lead-up to the Iraq war, where they all conspiracy-mongered and got it dead wrong, and it resulted in a war with people dying, should they all have been pulled as a result of that? Should every mainstream media outlet that cheerleaded this and got everything dead wrong and got us into war, built the case for war, built the, you know, built the public sentiment for war, should they all have been pulled at the time? And if you answer no to that, 
well, then maybe, um, you know, you're now beginning to understand why this whole principle of letting them exit whenever they want, however they want, based on whatever they want, it's not a good idea. So I would say it has begun, but it has begun a while ago, and now it's just the next logical step. And they'll keep going. It'll be Facebook, it'll be Twitter, it'll be YouTube. And um, the future is looking very censorious, regardless of what you think of this batch of censored folks.